With the new issue of Saga hitting the stands after many years, I grabbed the big omnibus and started on a reread to kind of catch back up with the series. And Saga is one of the most compelling comics around, right? I mean, it's the genuine definition of a page turner. And its success is not just about how strong each collected story arc is, each volume, but also on the craft of each individual issue. In this episode, I wanted to take a look kind of top down at the structure of a typical 22 page issue of Saga and what Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples do to create such compelling page turning comics. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. And I'll preface this by saying there are issues that don't follow the structure that we're about to get into, so this isn't a case of every single issue of Saga following the same pattern or anything, but rather a sense for how Brian K. Vaughan likes to pace out and plot issues. For example, issue 12 of Saga just works entirely differently than the thing we're about to break down. So see this as a way to understand the underpinnings of how BKV structures single issues, rather than kind of a golden rule that every single issue of Saga sticks to. Okay, so let's get into it, right? So what is the underpinning of a typical issue of Saga? For me, it boils down to these three things which I've recognised in a bunch of these issues, as far as I see them, right? So one is to open and end with a big splash image. Two is to limit scene lengths to around about four or five pages. And three is every scene should end with its own kind of little cliffhanger or immediate setup to something we're about to see. And that's it, right? <laughs> it sounds pretty simple and obvious. Each of those three points, there's a bit more to it that we'll get into, but that's essentially the basic premise for most 22-page issues of Saga. And it's something that most comics could also be structured around. And if they did, we'd be in a very boring world, of course, but it would be one in which most single issues would probably be pretty satisfying, right? So let's dig into that a little bit and explore what each of those elements is doing and why they work. The first is the easiest, right? So opening and closing your issue with a single splash image. Comics is ultimately a visual medium, it's what we talk about almost every time in this show, and power of a well-composed large image is a great and easy way to both establish and close out a narrative. The single large image means typically a single large focus, which is a great way of grabbing a reader's attention and saying, look, this is what we're doing this month, right? This is where we're going. The way single issues are printed in Saga's 22 page format is typically means that the first page is going to be a standalone on the right side of the open comic book, so a big splash image is the only thing a reader will be engaging with when opening a new issue. For digital readers this probably doesn't mean very much because you're probably only going to get a page at a time anyway, but the same point stands in that regard. So let's take an example here, right, this is from issue 7. We open this comic and immediately we're into this image of a young Marco with this animal in a field. It's one image, it's doing one thing, and it's setting a tone of this beautiful, peaceful place as the boy and his sort of dog-like animal are enjoying what looks like a nice summer's day. The rest of that scene then sort of works to append that idea and it's this place ravaged with war, but the tone required to sell that idea and set the scene is successfully established in just one image. And every single issue of Saga does this, right? In one beautiful Fiona Staples visual, it sets up a tone and gets us ready to enter the world of Saga. Doesn't hit us with tons of dialogue, with lots and lots of panels, with a scene or series of visuals that we have to kind of spend time parsing right off the bat. It shows us this big open doorway to the world, and it allows us to enter that at our own pace, and then it kicks off the story. It's such a simple concept, but it works incredibly effectively at just kind of holding your hand into the story. It's a window or a doorway, right? And beyond that window and that doorway is this whole world we're about to explore. But to begin with, it just eases us into the narrative. We just get this single frame, this single focus, this single image, and it says, okay, look, welcome. <laughs> you know, this is what we're about to get into. The same thing happens for the final page of an issue too, which ends with a big cliffhanger moment and a single big splash image, getting you set up and excited to read the next issue of Saga. Here's the final page of issue four, for example, which sets up Alana and Marco and baby Hazel, saying they're about to fight. You know, this gives us a character moment too, because Marco said he's a pacifist and would never fight, but now he has to protect his family. But it also tells us what will happen next issue, a fight's about to start. Here's the ending to literally just a random issue I grabbed when I was writing this, which is issue 17. A big reveal, this robot here has been killed, maybe, right? There's bad news for all the players in this story. So begin with a big image to help lead us back into the world. It's just got one focal point, nothing too complicated, there's not tons and tons and tons of things to kind of understand or read. And we'll end it in the same way too, a big reveal, a single image that lingers in the mind for the next 30 days or however many years it's been. It's much easier to create this moment with a single image, because that's typically what we're going to remember as a reader. Not necessarily, you know, sort of subtle panel to panel storytelling or anything like that, but the big image that gives us just this one large unanswered question. Saga, Fiona Staples, you know, they're masters at doing this. And at 22 pages an issue, that leaves Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples 20 pages beyond those two to fill the rest of the story. 
which leads us to points numbers two and three. Point two was to limit scene lengths to about four or five pages max, which means that over the course of a 22 page issue, we get around four or five scenes. It's usually closer to four, is what I've kind of noticed, but it falls around that amount. And this is important too, because four scenes means mixing up the visual storytelling just enough to balance plot and character concerns, while also avoiding visual repetitiveness. Too many scenes and there might not be enough meat on the bone to chew for the readers and the characters, but not enough and we're kind of left with a comic that gets stuck in just one location, which can be a problem in a monthly serialized format. And not that that's necessarily a bad thing, right? There's plenty of great comics that have taken place in one place, but when you're reading a story and it kind of gets stuck in the same backgrounds, the same locations, the same characters for a long period of time, that can be difficult in a serialized format. It can feel like things don't advance or the plot is too slow or just there's too much visual repetitiveness and staticness, right? So Brian K. Vaughan and Staple seem to find around the four to five scenes mark as a solid one for their series. It feels full, like there's a fair amount packed into each issue, but that around four to five pages of the scene, you're not getting too bogged down. It feels, you know, know, for lack of a better term, sort of pacey. And I mean that in a very simple way, because this is ignoring, for example, the amount of dialogue in any given scene or anything like that. But what I mean is that when you finish an issue of Saga, it feels like things have happened right? You know, because you've seen at least four scenes run from start to a conclusion. Four separate bits of action, you know, different locations, and likely a different set of characters in each of those instances. And the other part of that is my third point about how scenes will typically end. In most cases, a scene will end with a clear hook as to what will happen next with those characters before moving to a new place. There's a really good example here from issue nine, which ends a scene with Gwendolyn telling readers, you know, and technically the will in the background there, but this is very much towards the reader, that they're off to get the slave girl back. Let's get this nonsense over with. Very specifically giving us a hook for when we're gonna see them next. The next scene ends with Gwendolyn again holding a gun to the reader while someone begs for mercy. Right, what a hook, right? It ends with a dynamic beat that sets up the plot of Gwendolyn chasing our lead characters and also clearly being like this deadly character. The next scene is the final one of the issue, so we've got this big image splash page as this girl points the way towards Marco and Alana, our lead characters, right? Each scene ends setting up a hook for the next, ending with this kind of satisfying sort of mini cliffhanger beat that both ends the scene while also driving something else, so be it plot or character, forward. And again, not every comic needs to work like this. However, there is a reason why Saga has such a big reader audience over the months and made people buy the single issues rather than necessarily just trade weight. This is a comic that is designed in that kind of monthly format. Constant setup and hook, setup and hook, setup and hook, and then kind of doing that on a larger scale at the beginning and end of each issue. And you might have read stories or comics that end the scene by sort of wrapping up that scene and, you know, that scene alone. Moments that don't necessarily drive anything forward rather than contain themselves. But in this world of serialized monthly comics where you're kind of asking readers to plump down quite a fair bit of money, right, for your 22-page story, hitting moments like this can play an important role. And right at the top of the episode, I said, you know, this is a kind of rough, top-down view of the main structural points of an issue of Saga. But they are important. Open big as a clear, singular focus into your story. Wrap up every scene in about five pages. And each of those scenes will have a direct hook or sort of mini cliffhanger, however you want to describe it, for either the next scene or the next time we'll see those characters. And end the issue with a single splash image, again with a single focus, that creates a big question for what's going to happen next for our characters. For an idea on how to manage a sort of a pop story in a 22 page serialized monthly comic form, looking at that structure behind an issue of Saga is really not a bad idea. Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples tapped into something simple and solid, a foundation for telling their epic space set love story. Open the door to the world, keep your readers moving quickly through it, but with many hooks and many questions, and then leave them with a big bang. If you do all of that, then the structure of your story will be the least of your worries. Thanks for watching. If you're a fan of Strip Power Naked, there's a Patreon page that gets updated with every new episode. And if you join now, there's obviously years and years and years worth of brand new writing, annotations and reading lists that are part of that. You should also check out Panel by Panel magazine, which is the Eisner award-winning magazine that I edit. It's full of great deep dive interviews and tons and tons of great essays every single month. If you're a fan of Strip Panel Naked, you absolutely love Panel by Panel magazine. You can find that at panelxpanel.com. And finally, hit subscribe and a notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes, and I'll see you next time.